Hey class, uh, here. Welcome aboard our new format. Just want to go through a quick review of where we've been because this progressive era has a lot of different uh, facets and people and uh, changes that are going on in response to all the issues that develop as a result of the rapid uh, growth during the Industrial Revolution, which is continuing on through this period. So don't think that times are isolated. But so I wanted to go through this review. Okay, so here we are. The Progressive Era runs from the period of roughly 1890 to 1920. It's a period when various individuals and groups disjointed. They're not all working together, and sometimes their uh, interests uh, collide. Um, sometimes they have different motives, seeking the same result uh, for different reasons. Um, so there's all kinds of nuances, and, and it's not like a unified progressive party that's uh, trying to make all these changes. It's a diverse group of people. Um, so that's how we are continuing through this as we look through at individual uh, people. That's how we are, are approaching it. That's why I started off you with your initial uh, personality research that some of you have not done yet. I hope um, you will get that in. Uh, but we introduced the concept of a muck breaker. That term actually developed from or came from a uh, early book from 1678, John Bunyan called The Pilgrim's Process. If you want a copy, I have it. I have many copies of these books that we talk about, like The Jungle and Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy is also mentioned in your uh, book. Uh, these are not historical books. They're actually just novels uh, that you can enjoy. Um, Looking Backward is a science fiction novel where a person during the Industrial Revolution falls asleep and wakes up in the year 2000. It's a very interesting story and it's only 200 pages and it's relevant today despite being written in like 1887 I think it was uh, something like that but I have copies of these so I hope you will take me up on that offer and borrow one to read or sometime down the line you will come across a copy and think hey I'm gonna try to read that but Upton Sinclair was our first muckraker these were like investigative journalists who wrote stories to call uh, to attention issues during society that needed to be dealt with uh, in various ways. So Upton Sinclair in the Chicago Meatpacking Factory, he goes undercover, pretends he is a worker because he is mostly concerned with the working conditions, the hours, the dangerous uh, conditions where people could fall into boiling water and we watched a video with uh, photos of just abominable working conditions, dark and dirty and just nasty, that these immigrants came over to work in. They think they're going to live the American dream and they end up in this just disgusting place to work. But also associated with that was the food. Uh, disgusting, uh, diseased animals being slaughtered and put into the food uh, just before anybody notices and who else knows what, uh, just disgusting. So it had two facets, his book, this jungle, and we read a little portion of it from the packet that you have as well. Uh, when he published his book in 1906, it caused an immediate stir. He was immediately a best-selling author, made his fortune from it, uh, really. But his main issue of working conditions was not what the public was most concerned about. They were thinking of their dinner table. Like, what is this food I'm eating? And rightfully so, they became grossed out. And within months, um, uh, President Theodore Roosevelt uh, was uh, drawn in by this and actually wrote to the author, Upton Sinclair, saying, what in the world is this stuff real? And if it is, uh, you know, we're gonna do something about it. And, Within months of being it published, uh, two acts were um, enacted that still influence today. 
uh, the Pure Food and Drug Act, and the Meat Inspection Act. So these regulations of our food industry continue today, thankfully. Um, and they were both signed into law within months of his book in 1906. So he is our first muckraker that we explored. Upton Sinclair in his book, The Jungle, about the Chicago Meat Packing Factory and all the disgusting stuff that ended up in food at that time. Again, you are, were supposed to do your individual uh, personality research uh, with regard to the list on the board. Some of you have done that. Some of you have not. Please do that. It is 200 points formative, so, you know, it matters. The individuals to pick from included, included Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Henry George, not Henry James, he is a novelist. The Portrait of a Lady and Wings of a Dove are other classic novels. I have copies if you want to read them. Ida B. Wells, Jane Addams, Francis Willard, Dr. Benjamin Rush, Florence Kelly, and Mother Jones uh, were on that list. So you were to pick two of them, create a slideshow presentation, and present as to one of them. Um, given our remote uh, aspect, uh, I guess on Zoom, we can still do our presentation, so we'll still keep that going. So please work on that. Pick two and present on one. One of our students presented on Susan B. Anthony, or two of them. She was most concerned about women's right to vote, suffrage. That word has to do with the right to vote. And so my questions to you right now are, what were her arguments as to why women should be entitled to vote? And what change in women's circumstances during the Industrial Revolution contributed to that? So uh, today, after this conclusion of this video, I'd like to do a little bit of, in, like you, to do a little bit of independent research. The answers might be in that packet from the textbook that I copied, or you might have to look uh, through the internet shouldn't be too hard. I want you to write up a quick uh, paper, so to speak, answering those questions. What were Susan B. Anthony's arguments of why women should have the right to vote? And what changes during the Industrial Revolution and their life's circumstances kind of contributed to that? Elizabeth Cady Stanton, she also worked with Susan B. Anthony uh, towards women's suffrage. Um, so those two kind of go together. Booker T. Washington and Webb, W.E.B. Du Bois. Uh, I mentioned that these two go together too, like uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony. But these two gentlemen were concerned about racial inequality and racial discrimination, but they had very different views of how to achieve it. Booker T. Washington was a member of the establishment. He's kind of in Washington. And uh, so he's rolling along with the establishment. And his view, uh, basically, is that the achievement towards racial equality should be a gradual one. Work hard, show your worth, um, and eventually they'll understand that we are equal and we'll achieve, achieve equality. Kind of a gradual thing, let's prove ourselves. Whereas W.E.B. Du Bois was an activist and actually a founding, the found, founder of the NAACP. Um, he wanted more aggressive um, fighting for equality and wanted it now. So um, if you pick them, you need to delineate that and show. We actually read in our pack of primary sources um, a passage or a presentation by Booker T. Washington. So. Uh, look over that again and see uh, his language in there that I pointed out that really shows an attack on W.B. E. B. Du Bois or vice versa. So during the Industrial Revolution, corporations grew, the capital uh, system was advanced with the banking system um, to finance these where it separated owners with shareholders and people could invest money 
Um, so you had this big influx of capital able to carry forth all these inventions that were being made and innovations with factories and vertical integration and, and all, all that. So these corporations grew big and fast and they became more powerful, powerful politically, powerful economically, where a corporation so big could drive out all its competitors and they would engage in various nefarious uh, mechanisms to do that, to drive out their competitors like price fixing. You know, they'd get together with their other uh, big company on the block and say, hey, you know, uh, stop trying to beat me on price, let's just both charge $100 for this and we can both make more if we work together. But if you try to undercut me, then we're both going to make less. Um, otherwise, they would also engage in uh, predatory pricing where they would come into a market and really lower their price, operate at a loss, so they could essentially drive the smaller businesses who couldn't afford to do that out of business, and then they would raise the price as they became a monopoly. Uh, the Sherman Antitrust Act and another later act uh, tried to deal with that situation and say, you know, you're too big and so we'll break you up, we'll prevent price fixing, will prevent price gouging um, for the benefit of the consumer. Now laying behind this is really the whole issue during the Industrial Revolution where you had this great uh, explosion between the really rich and the really poor. Okay, so there's a big income gap, uh, wealth gap. And so the Sherman Antitrust Act and several other uh, things such as unions and um, other, other aspects of the uh, reform movements sought to uh, bring that more in line. Like you remember the video we did on um, the single tax of Henry George, uh, his idea of land ownership and speculation at the time really contributing to that wealth gap and he took a very socialist approach and said the ta uh, land should be taxed on its uh, value and a, a single tax across the board and prevent this speculation of people just holding on to that wealth. Uh, didn't pass, didn't, wasn't successful, but uh, you see that issue between the super rich and the super poor, the gap growing and issues uh, as a result of that leading to uh, actions like the Sherman Antitrust Act. Uh, Sherman Antitrust Act was in 1890. Its companion one in 1914, which expanded it, was the Clayton Antitrust Act. So those kind of pair up together. We also saw, the, I mentioned, the political power of the corporations. They have all this money, they can influence uh, the government, and that really kind of sidelined we the people. So also during the uh, Industrial Revolution and the Progressive Era, we saw a movement to empower we the people. So we talked about three different things, the referendum, the initiative, and the recall. These are three different ways that power are given to the people um, to counteract both that power of the corporation and also corruption. Remember our movie on Boss Tweed, right? The quintessential corrupt guy who was brought down by an investigative journalist. Um, so the referendum initiative and recall deal with both of those issues, corrupt, corruption and corporate power to drive power to we the people, I like to say. The difference between a referendum and an initiative is how they start. A referendum is where the legislature itself comes up with a proposed law, but instead of voting on it themselves, they put it on a ballot during an election for the people to vote on. Uh, think of refer. They, the legislature is referring it to the people. A referendum uh, starts with the legislature, gets on the ballot, and we the people vote on it. The initiative is a very similar idea. It ends up on the ballot during the election for we the people to vote on, but it doesn't even start with the legislature. It starts from the people. They get a bunch of signatures, and if you get enough signatures, you can 
have it put on the ballot for people to vote on as an initiative. Uh, so it's initiative means taking the start. So think of the people take the start. And that's how it gets on the ballot. Referendum and initiative. Uh, the recall, this is, I, the recall is a way that we can deal with uh, the likes of Boss Tweed. That is the ability to remove an elected person by the people. Uh, if you get enough signatures, you can get it on the ballot. Should this person be recalled, or we'll have a recall vote, even if it's in between elections, uh, to remove corrupt people like Boss Tweed. Uh, one of our characters was Ida B. Wells. She was most concerned about racial discrimination, and in particular, lynching. It's basically hanging of people based on their race. It's like a race hate crime. She was most concerned about that. Jane Adams, she is most remembered for her whole house, which was more than just a housing issue to deal with the housing uh, blight of all these immigrants and urban workers, uh, really provided an uplifting community for them to help with language barriers and uh, other uh, issues to help them assimilate into society and and have a good life. Uh, she is well known for that. We read a passage about that in our handout of primary sources as well. So. Florence Kelly, she was mostly concerned about child labor. We will watch videos on that later. Uh, but she is one of the characters as well. Mother Jones, her slogan was, join the Union Boys. She was most concerned about the income disparity between uh, the owners and the workers and the various working conditions and she became a very uh, well-known uh, activist for the formation of unions at the time. Recently we watched, actually not long ago, we watched the Triangle Shear Waste Fire which was in 1911 where uh, capital greed led to many uh, shortfalls in terms of that building, that textile uh, building filled with immigrant women and really children, young ladies, um, uh, where 146 uh, passed away. We're currently working on crafting a bill um, as your groups to address some of those issues. So you should be working on that. I know Two groups have turned theirs in, and I think we have three groups. So one, we're still waiting on one group to turn in your bill. Please make sure that is done. Then we are going to have a uh, discussion, a debate on the Senate floor regarding those bills, about which bills should pass and maybe what's missing in them. Uh, and we'll have a vote. It'll be kind of fun. Won't affect your grade who wins or doesn't get voted as far as the bill. Just bragging rights, I guess. Uh, but it should be a ex good exercise because in society, uh, when you grow up and you're leaders, uh, even if you're a member of a homeowners association or uh, a work group, whatever the case may be, uh, you may have to come up with bylaws and regulations and that's a good start. Maybe you'll become a senator yourself. So many of the issues uh, among them were a door was locked to prevent an escape because the owners wanted to prevent theft of materials. They had a faulty fire escape that collapsed. Walkways were not clear of debris and obstacles, overly crowded with people and machines. Too little fire water, no alarm, no sprinkler system, and more. That link is on the sheet for progressive personalities. So if you want to rewatch uh, that video on the shirtwaist fire, you can do so. And lastly, we watched a movie, kind of a cool uh, short movie about Boss Tweed, the embodiment of corruption himself, where an investigative journalist took him down. Uh, the various types of corruption he was engaged in were embezzlement. He's basically siphoning off money from these government contracts. You saw him dividing up the money between his friends and him. Uh, they were fixing contracts, deciding who gets it, so the people 
uh, didn't necessarily get the best deal. They got the deal that benefited him most. And also fixing elections, corrupt uh, voting fraud, um, et cetera, in that video. So uh, the, again, the recall is a way for people to deal with this. And in this case, he ended up in jail because of that investigative journalist, who, by the way, overcame many different obstacles. So uh, give some thought about what obstacles were in that investigative journalist's way. Uh, they were highlighted during that video. We talked about amendments during the progressive era. There's four of them. We really only hit on two, but there are four. Uh, with this explosive uh, growth in government regulation and the role of the government in the economy and people's lives, uh, as opposed to the previous laissez-faire, hands-off approach that really helped the economic growth, uh, now you have this big uh, government, a lot of action being taken, uh, how are you going to fund it? So the 16th Amendment sought to address that where it allowed the government to collect a federal income tax. So, and that of course still remains today. When you get a job, you're going to see on your pay stub where uh, Uncle Sam takes out a portion that is courtesy of this era and the 16th Amendment. So uh, these are very important to know which one. As there's only four of them, but you do have to know which one is which because it's four easy questions on a test. Okay. The second one is the 17th Amendment. Think Boss Tweed and his fixing elections and the power of corporations in getting senators elected. The 17th Amendment uh, was a response to that sort of stuff and provided for the direct election of senators by we the people. 17th Amendment, election of senators by the people. So sort of counter the power of corporations, that wealth gap, the really wealthy versus the little guy um, by giving the people their direct vote. We talked about uh, how the progressive era and the, or not the progressive, the industrial revolution, the growth of this urbanization of people seeking entertainment, people coming together. Uh, there was a bunch of vices that happened about that, one being alcoholism. We'll talk more about that. But the 18th Amendment in 1919 uh, was prohibition, banned uh, the production, sale, and import of alcohol. It was later repealed in 1933 with the 21st Amendment. So. And the last one of the four Progressive Era Amendments is the 19th Amendment, which in 1920 gave women the right to vote. So Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton would be happy with that. They would be celebrating. Um, and it, we will find out in our next segment about World War I how World War I actually worked to spur or uh, prevent that to be uh, passed. Okay. So all these things kind of intertwine uh, together. So that brings us currently, that is a review. So those are the, certainly the things you need to know. You need to do that independent research. We need to get past this bill and then we are going to work on some more of the issues and solutions and people involved with them during the progressive era. So, we got it. Thanks.